I like to put this slide up. I don't think you can see it very clearly. Unfortunately, it's not uh, it's too lighted here, but it shows a, a guy out swimming or uh, surfing, and all of a sudden you see in the wave uh, behind him there, uh, looks like about a 12 foot long shark. Uh, and that's my old theory is that when you think everything's going well, something out there is going to bite you. Uh, and the other one I like to use is uh, this one here that says, when you can see clearly, uh, uh, something's going to happen to buzz up everything. And that's what's happened in the last year. We've had a very unique year. This is actually a sandstorm coming into Phoenix a couple of years ago. So uh, um, this was a very unique year. It's the first time I believe in uh, at least three decades, I think 40 years, that we've had a drought in the United States, Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay in the same calendar year. That was very unique. Uh, before we'd have a drought in the U.S., we'd have a great crop in South America. Or bad crop in South America, a great crop in the U.S. This time it hit all four. Uh, and uh, South American soybean production was down 742 million bushels, or 16.3%. U.S. production thus far, according to USDA estimates, down 364 million bushels, or 13.5 percent. We'll find out tomorrow if USDA is going to uh, fool with that estimate again. Um, my gut instinct says it's about right. Uh, I think that with enough late rains to where we may have gotten some boost in some soybeans, maybe not in pod counts, but in the size of the bean in the pods, and that we may wind up with yields about where USDA is saying. And I'm hearing that you're getting some good yields up here on the early harvested beans, and that's good. Um, the uh, uh, Indian soybean crop, it looked like it was going to be bad early on, but now they started getting rain in the middle of the summer, and they're a little above average on rainfall in the key areas in Madhya Pradesh and uh, central part of India. So that crop may be okay, but we won't know until October or so when they start harvesting. It's hard to tell. There's four million people raise soybeans in India. Uh, most of them about a half an acre, or in an acre uh, size, so you don't know what they're going to produce, and they don't either. Um, but in total, we have seen North and South America soybean production cut by about 1.2 billion bushels. Um, the uh, Argentine corn crop was down by 165 million bushels, but fortunately, and I do mean fortunately for the world market, Brazil had a fantastic winter crop of corn and um, their corn production was 442, 443 million bushels greater than last year. Now USDA is forecasting US corn production will be down 1.57 billion bushels this year uh, from compared to last year. Uh, my gut instinct is, is that it will be less than that. I don't know why, I'm just based on some early harvest yields and down in Illinois and Indiana, uh, we're seeing uh, I would not be surprised tomorrow to see less than 10 billion bushels in the corn crop. So it's going to be a mess this year with, uh, with corn crop. Uh, we had this problem. Fortunately, uh, Hurricane Isaac helped out a lot, but we were very low on the Mississippi River. Uh, we were down to within a couple of inches of the lowest level in the last 40 years when we had the uh, I think it was 1988 when they had to shut down the river for two weeks or three weeks because of low water levels. Uh, but we did get a lot of rain that came up with Isaac through Louisiana, uh, Arkansas, Missouri, and into Illinois and Indiana. So I think that's brought the water level back up. But we need more rain to keep it up or we're going to have problems getting our crop that we did produce down to the Gulf for export. Um, there's also a potential that's, uh, that's important to you fellas. Uh, the grain terminals on the west coast. We have two elevators out there, the new EGT elevator in, uh, um, outside of Portland and the uh, uh, one other elevator that do have contracts with the Longshoreman Union, but the rest of them don't. And we may get a strike here in the next month of all those workers at the west coast ports. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, you know, I mean, it's a little better now. I was really worried that they had, uh, if you couldn't move it out of the Gulf, then they would strengthen their hand on the West Coast to be able to say, give us a high wages or because you won't be able to export anything. Uh, so we're going to see how that sorts out. Uh, hopefully that we'll get an agreement there and we can continue to export. Because 
what's changed so much in the last few years is that, you know, used to in Minnesota, uh, you kind of viewed yourself at the end of the line uh, by exporting because uh, you had to have everything south of you exported before they wanted to come get your crop. And that's when you got the good prices. And that's why you have more storage up here than most states. But now you get the West Coast elevators, including the new big one that was built uh, um, outside of Portland. And now we're going to see a lot, much larger share of the U.S. crop moving out of the West Coast because our biggest growth markets for soybeans and I think also for corn in the future are going to be China and Asian markets. So uh, you're going to see a lot more moving that direction.